I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined today by Chairman Han, the chairman of the Global Green Growth Institute. And you've come back for a second year in a row, so thank you very much for that. Well, thank you for the invitation this year also. Now, we, we talked a year ago about how you were starting this organization, what the plans for it were. Can you tell me a little bit about how it's going and, and how you're getting the implementation? Well, we are getting tremendous support from uh, several countries, uh, advanced as well as developing. But also we have uh, recently recruited the exec director. Mm -hmm. um, actually, he was uh, one of the managing directors of the Davos Forum. Mm -hmm. Rick Simons is our exec director. So we are very happy that um, he has joined us. And all in all, although it's uh, headquartered in Seoul, this is international mm -hmm. institution and you would like to become truly an in international institution. Mm -hmm. And tell me how you think the mindset is changing on climate change, because it's always quite a big topic here at Davos, but what's mm -hmm. your particular message about it? Well, we've been trying very hard to sell the issue of climate change by extending Kyoto Protocol, which expires end of, by the end of this year. But mm -hmm. We failed to do so. So what we agreed in uh, Durban last uh, December at the COP17 is that we will try to find new modality before 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of stock and measure, a stock and measure, and I'm sorry that we haven't made any great progress on this issue. But apart from dealing with the mitigation and adaptation, mm -hmm. green growth is more than that. Mm -hmm. Green growth aims at system change. For the last 250 years, mm -hmm. since the start of the first industrial revolution, we have been heavily relying on quantity-oriented growth model. Uh, in order to grow fast, we need a huge amount of energy for, in the form of fossil fuel energy, which created uh, carbon dioxide, creating problem of climate change. Now, we have arrived at a time when we have to change this past paradigm of growth, that is quantity-oriented growth, into other one low carbon green growth mm -hmm. and uh, Global Green Growth Institute is there to advocate the necessity of systemic change from the past growth paradigm into a new one that is green growth and um, it's only Korea has uh, been implementing green growth policy for the last three years mm -hmm. so a very short experience but there are still some interesting experience that we want to share with developing countries mm -hmm. because developed countries have a domestic capacity, they can easily emulate what we are doing. But developing countries have no domestic capacity, so we are there to cooperate with them, to um, share our experience mm -hmm. with them. How could the experience of Korea help, for example, Brazil or Kazakhstan or Cambodia, some of the countries that I know that you're working in? It has to be tailor-made because uh, you don't have the same kind of uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. In case of uh, Cambodia, for example, when I met with the Prime Minister Hun Sen uh, uh, last year, early last year, he was greatly interested in uh, promoting green growth in his own country, mm -hmm. but they have no uh, basic framework uh, right. uh, infra ready, so we are there to help uh, with them setting up legal framework, mm -hmm. administrative framework, and also training the mid-ranking government officials mm -hmm. to learn what it's all about. So uh, in case of uh, East Kalimantan, we are more on uh, forestry issues. In case of uh, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. they are keenly interested in water, mm -hmm. hydroelectric uh, city generation. So we are also working along the lines of water issues. So. Each country has different kind of uh, uh, requirements, mm -hmm. so we try to tailor-made according to what they want. I know that you have a lot of experience on the water side, don't you, because <laughs> yes, you're involved yeah. in another organization with the yes. UN. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about what your experience is there and how, how important you think this issue is? I am a member of the UN Secretary General's Advisory mm -hmm. Board on Water and Sanitation, now chaired by the Prince Orange of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am founding chair of the high-level expert panel on water and disaster, UNSCAP. So on both fronts, on water and sanitation and water and disaster, I have been heavily involved. For example, last year in March, there was a huge earthquake in Japan, mm -hmm. followed by tsunami. 
So we had a meeting in Tokyo about a month after the tsunami, uh, together with JICA, headed by Madame Ogara, to deal with the problem of water disaster there. And um, water is uh, as equally important as air. There's mm -hmm. climate change, mm -hmm. climate things. And um, so uh, these two critical issues facing the humanity has been concern of mine mm -hmm. since I left the Korean government in 2004. But uh, while I was working at the United Nations you know, as a special envoy of the Secretary General on climate change, I was called back by the new government to serve as a prime minister. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm no more in Korea as a government official, I'm now back to the United Nations to work in the area, mm -hmm. which I think affects the future of humanity mm -hmm. tremendously. We had um, Sylvia Earle in earlier uh, this week, and she was talking about the importance of putting a, a price, if you like, on, on the ocean, on what we take from the ocean. It's a carbon sink. There's a great mm -hmm. amount of biodiversity that we don't actually mm -hmm. value. And I wonder mm -hmm. if that chimes with what your experience is. Well, that's one way of uh, preserving the, the water mm -hmm. or air or whatnot. In case of, say, uh, climate change, carbon tax, one of the issues now being discussed uh, very seriously. In case of water, by pricing the water, you'll be able to save the water, mm -hmm. which is in short supply in some countries. But that alone will not solve the problem. Sometimes when you, when you price your water, that affects not the rich people, but the poor people. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we have to be very careful when designing a new policy, mm -hmm. particularly when it affects the poor people. Thank you so much for coming into the Hub Pavilion well, here in Davos. Thank you very much. I'm Lash. Thank you.